uh, and we'll we'll come back to another promo uh, later on in the program. But moving on, the next match was Jamie Hader versus Ruby Soho. And Brian, you shamed me that I didn't watch the Casino Battle Royal that Ruby Soho debuted in. This happens every time I give you shit about not watching and, one of their matches. Every time this happens. And everybody was talking about Ruby Soho. is She's another escapee from Devil's Island. She's never been so over. And just the fans have gone crazy over her also. So, okay. It's a girls match, but I'm not going to skip it. I'm going to watch it because Ruby Soho is so over. And they had a brief, you know, bit of the match at the start, and then they went to the break, but they came back from the break, and I kept waiting to see what all of shouting was, as Arn Anderson would say, what's causing all this? This was a match. I will admit these girls look more like stars and work better than the tiny Japanese outlaw crew that they had to start with because of Twinkle Toes' peculiar fetishes. But this match appeared to be a clash of styles, in my opinion. At one point, Ruby Soho was on a Argentina Rocca shoulder ride and then just leaned back and Jamie Hayter was just trying to hold her up and they just fell in a heap and then jamie Hayter gave ruby soho some kind of combination snap mare sideways stunner that she apparently invented on the spot and they tried to get it back and jamie Hayter did some kind of big move and got a two count and then ruby soho ducked something kicked her in the head and one two three and Immediately after that, the referee, for inexplicable reasons, the announcers even mentioned, well, yeah, she was stuck in a hug with the referee. The referee got a big grin, spread his arms out, and hugged Ruby Soho, one of the competitors, because she won the match. He was so happy for her. The referee. Was there a payoff here? Is he a crooked referee? The referee hugs her like they're long-lost friends which distracts her so that Britt Baker can jump her from behind. It, it, have they told the story that the referee and Ruby Soho, are they related? Are they going out on dates? Why was did he drop any pretense of, was he just so glad that this monkey fucking a football looking match was over with? I think the story is, and I'm not certain that, she was friendly with him when she was working on the indie scene before she got to WWE, and now she's reunited with her former friendly referee here in the confines of the Elite Friends. Well, goddamn, then when Britt Baker's promo would be, don't give us that referee, because he's a friend of hers. <laughs> anyway, he distracted her so that the heels could jump her from behind, and they start trying to get some heat on Ruby Soho, and here comes, at long last, she's back. Yes! Reho! Yes. In a pink frilly chiffon skirt that looks like she's gone to a seven year old's birthday party and an AEW jacket that was made for a, some kind of grown adult with sleeves so long she looked like she was wearing a straight jacket. All five feet of her, and I don't think she's 98 pounds anymore. She looks like she's lost weight. She's probably been cutting the carbs. She hit the ring. That's too glorious a word for it. She can't even hit a ring. She rolled into the ring and made no noise doing it and tried to make a comeback with some pushing forearms on the heels. And then Jamie Hayter grabbed Riho and fucked up some kind of move that she gave her and almost she dropped her, which she was supposed to, but she almost dropped her before she dropped her. And then here come Chris Flatlinder hitting the ring with a chair and ran everybody out, including most of the viewers. This whole thing made everybody involved look foolish. Did I summarize it in succinct but accurate form? This may not have been the best match for you to check out. <laughs> Once again, I'll say this. Tony Khan, if you are listening, and maybe we have to go above Lars's head and go to Tim Armstrong, but play the opening to Ruby Soho 
It is a great song, dare I say an iconic song, of one of the best albums of the 1990s. The intro is perfect for pro wrestling. Even if you want to cut it and go right to the chorus out of the intro, you're doing a stupid thing, man. Now this match. This match. This match. This match. Um, Not good. It fell apart. It went way too long. This is another one of those matches. If it was four minutes, it wouldn't have hurt for the same finish. And none of the bad shit, or I shouldn't say that, but a lot of the bad shit would have been minimized. But it fell apart, and it shouldn't have been given as much time as it was, despite the fact that Ruby Soho's over. My argument would be, hey, she's over. Get her in and out in four minutes. So they want to see her again. Britt Baker's fantastic. There were moments I liked Hater in the match, and then the match fell apart over and over again. But she's got a good look. And that's about all I have to say about that. You know what they could have... And I've given Chris Flatlander grief because of some of the early exhibitions she put on. But she's got good size. She stuck with it. She had an injury. She rehabbed. She's got back in the ring. She's got potential. She looks like something. So I'm not even going to blister him about that. Ruby Soho, she looks good. She's got something. Not sure she needs to be in any more single matches with Jamie Hayter. They just have a, it's an oil and water type of thing, maybe. No, they should have put her in there with Thunder Rosa coming off the pay-per-view. Thunder Rosa. They've got Thunder Rosa now. They've got Serena Deeb when she comes back off of injury. They have Britt Baker. They, They could have cut bait on Riho. She's been gone so long. Nobody would have missed her at this point. Riho and the the Freddie Mercury wannabe with the mustache and the mic stand and the rest of these outlaws, they're not even outlaw independent wrestlers from Japan. They're outlaw fetish wrestlers from Japan that wrestle in goddamn apartment buildings, as we have documented, and little groups in barns. And because Twinkle Toes spent a long time in Japan, and I wish he'd move back there, this is what they started with for a women's division. And somebody was able to convince poor Tony Khan that this shit would be palatable on American television. These 90-pound schoolgirls scrapping with each other in a very frilly and feminine and phony way. They aren't all 90-pound schoolgirls. So now they've got real female wrestlers on their roster they could have told Riho thanks for coming Riho stay home we got real talent now but instead Twinkle Toes still has this ridiculous fixation on trying to foist this foolishness off on the American public I'm happy Riho's back I've missed him oh, on the show it. I have no problem you know what If there's one girl in that division that's the fucking Leon Ruff, and I hate to use that example, the Tommy Rich when he first got to Georgia. If there's one girl in that division that's that, I'm okay with it being real as long as there aren't other ones. That's why I say there aren't a bunch of 90-pound. You know, she does looks like she's maybe 120. I don't know. But I've known Tommy Rich since 1975, and if he heard you compare him to Riho, he would fucking take a tire iron to you. Oh, please. I'd knock him on his ass. He's an old drunk. But no, I think I got not no with the tire iron though. I well, I don't have weapons. Somebody said something about a tire iron. Yeah, it's gonna get crushed against his skull if he makes the wrong move. The idiot. <laughs> now you got me in a feud with Tommy fucking Rich. <laughs> I have no problem with Rio you being fucking here. idiot. You're just <laughs> calling him a fucking idiot just because he wants to take a tire tool to you. <laughs> and that was the uh, women's match. Yes, it was. 